coming to this episode of Keeping Connected. Today we're here with Homer Hickam. I am Brian Casto, the West Virginia 2022 Teacher of the Year, and I'm here today with the award-winning author and native West Virginian, Homer Hickam. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me, Brian. And congratulations, by the way, of being Teacher of the Year 2022. Thank you so much. That it's an honor to have you here today. That is great. I appreciate it. Um, so the first question we'd like to ask you is about your experience here in West Virginia. So tell us what it was like to grow up in wild and wonderful West Virginia. <laughs> I grew up in McDowell County. If you look at the map of West Virginia, that's that little bump at the very bottom. Uh, that was part of uh, where, I, when I grew up, that was the billion dollar coal fields. And uh, there were a lot of company towns at that time. That meant that it was a town that was owned totally by the company. And Colwood was that way. Uh, every house, every street, every fence, um, every store was owned by the company. In order to live in Colwood, uh, a man had to work for the company. That was required because they gave him a house to live in and, and also the family uh, needed to be headed up by a coal miner. Uh, even the church was owned by the company. Uh, so, um, and a preacher was there for a company man. And um, when the uh, preacher uh, uh, retired or left, um, then the company would go out and hire a new preacher, uh, and quite often it would be in a different denomination. So we used to say we got the low bid religion, whatever it was. So, uh, which, so it was a very, very interesting town to grow up in. My dad uh, rose from uh, just a basic common miner to the superintendent of the company. And so, during the Rocket Boys era, I was 14 through 17 years old, it's 1957 through 1960, my dad was superintendent of the mine, which is sort of like being the mayor of the whole town. He's responsible for this whole company town. So, um, but uh, the other kids didn't hold it against me that my dad was the superintendent, I, you know, they were all friends. I went through school, first through 12th grade with the same kids, except when we went to high school, that was a consolidated school, so we had uh, kids from all over the county coming to that, that same school, which is pretty scary when all you had known for your whole life was just kids from Colwood, your yeah. same town. Uh, so uh, that's where I was. I was in the 10th grade when I was 14 years old um, when my life changed because Sputnik, the first Earth satellite, was launched. That's amazing. Um, so you talked a little bit about it, but what, what are your experiences that you've noticed about your own experiences and the experiences of students today that they might be going through? Yeah, you wonder, you know, I, when I talk to the students, I'm 78 years old. It's like, what can I bring to these students? You know, because their whole life experience is so different uh, from my own and the education and the history and with the computers and cell phones and all that stuff that we didn't have. I guess uh, as uh, my age, I guess one thing I can bring to them is I'm still here <laughs> and I'm still trying to be as productive as I possibly can. Um, but I do feel a responsibility to uh, tell the Rocket Boy story, um, which uh, has been judged to be an inspirational story about kids where it doesn't matter where you're from, uh, who your parents were or anything else. If you have a passion for something in your life, uh, if you're willing to work really, really hard to make it come true, then um, it, it, it will, but you've got to expect obstacles along the way, just like the Rocket Boys, when our rockets blew up or my dad or the town people got mad at us for uh, stinking up the whole town and all that kind of thing. So I think it's a metaphor for life and, um, and for a successful life, and I hope the kids, um, even today with all their different technology and so on, they recognize that, because it's told, that story is told through the voice of that boy, that teenage boy, and I think it why it really resonates with young people. It, and it really does. Um, and I'm sure you know this, but I'm a West Virginia native as well, and I'm from a small town in Boone County called Madison, mm -hmm. and um, it just so happens that my dad was a coal miner for 26 years, and when the movie October Sky came out, he had just been laid off from the coal mines, and he wasn't sure that he wanted to go back. Um, and when the movie came out, it really inspired him to make a career change yeah. in his mid 40s, which was a really tough thing to do. He yeah, was sure. you know, supporting yeah. my family. Mm -hmm. um, so how does it make you feel knowing that uh, your story inspires people so much? Yeah, well, of course, uh, for young kids that don't have a career already, then I hope it inspires them to uh, not necessarily go into a STEM field, engineering, science field, although I, ho I hope it does, because to me, 
working in engineering and science is really a lot of fun, ultimately, you know, every day you get to do something new, but also just that you figure out what your passion in life is. So there's, there's an A in STEM, they call it STEAM, that's mm -hmm. art, and I'm also a writer. And uh, there are, West Virginians tend to be really good storytellers because we hear storytellers all the time. And so we're able, we figure it out pretty quick. You've got to have a, mid, a beginning, middle, and end, hit that punchline and all that. <laughs> so, uh, so we're good at that. So we're not, we're not only, uh, there's a lot of possibilities for us as STEM uh, folks uh, at make it a career, but also that art part uh, as well. Thank you. Um, and you, and you touched on like the, the technology there. Um, what's really cool is um, this book that you were talking about, Don't Blow Yourself Up, that some of the proceeds go to a scholarship program for people to go to space camp. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I, um, I'm on the board at space camp. That's in Huntsville, Alabama, which is also known as Rocket City, USA. It's a perfect place to have it. That's where all the rockets that were designed for the Apollo program, the Saturn One, the Saturn V, were all designed there and mostly built there. So, but um, one, of the, one of the wonderful programs that's in Huntsville is Space Camp, the world famous Space Camp. Yes. And I got to be on the board. And uh, so um, uh, it's a, a, a great, great place where uh, uh, young people come in and adults, we have adult Space Camp, can come in and actually train like a real astronaut for an entire week. Great program. We also have other camps called Cyber Camp, uh, Robotics Camp, we have Aviation Challenge, we have Space Academy for the older kids, uh, and we, we train them just like the astronauts or like real pilots on, on all the simulators and everything. Great, great program. I'm really, really pleased to be associated with that. And the cool thing is, is that uh, the Adams Hallmark family, uh, when Don't Blow Yourself Up came out, uh, they wanted me to come by their stores and sign books, and I said, oh, yeah, I'll do that, but I want to tell you about Space Camp. I don't see enough West Virginia students down at Space Camp, mm -hmm. so uh, could we set up, uh, would you be willing to set up a scholarship and uh, donate uh, a, a percentage of each book sold uh, to a Space Camp scholarship? And they were excited about that idea. So that's how that has come about, and uh, we'll get all that up on, uh, online on spacecamp.com. Uh, very soon, and I look forward to more West Virginia students coming down as a result of this scholarship. That's an awesome opportunity uh, for students, and I think that they'll really get a lot out of it. I hope so. I really do. That's just really cool. Um, and kind of to go along with that, and you, and you touched on this, um, so many students in Appalachia and West Virginia may feel like that there's so many things holding them back from their dreams. So, um, what would you say to some of those, those young students about reaching uh, their potential and, and going for their dreams? Well, that's one of the reasons why I, I really uh, uh, pushed going to space camp uh, and also going, uh, you know, if you can, can travel a little bit. It's all about networking. Mm -hmm. So at space camp, you get to meet real astronauts. You get to re meet real space engineers and so on. So it start, you network. And you right. also meet kids your own age that are really interested in this, and so they're going back, and their parents probably maybe work in the space industry and so on. So networking is really, really cool. And so um, that, uh, to me, there's a great advantage of that, of, of being able, okay, I want to work in the space business. You already know people in the space business, so, so Space Camp is a great program in, in order to do that. But I, I just have to say that um, what's coming, what I feel is coming, is a, a really space-based economy for the whole world. We're going to go out there, we need the resources, we're going to go out and get that. So, in my opinion, they're going to need really good plumbers, they're going to need really <laughs> good electricians, they're going to need uh, really good cooks, they're going to be, uh, need really good miners um, to go uh, to the moon and out to the asteroids and do this. So I think there's going to be opportunity. The main thing is to be good at whatever you want to do. If you want to be a plumber, be the best plumber you possibly can be, whatever it is. And um, uh, I own a house in the Virgin Islands, and, uh, which is a pretty upscale place. The, the house that's uh, beside me is owned by a plumber who has made a lot more money than me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great advice, um, you know, whatever course of life you take, doing the best that it you can possibly exactly. to do. Yeah. Um, and I think that's advice we can all learn a lot from. Um, and we'd love to have you here all day if we were able to, but um, I know that you've got a busy schedule, but you're going to be making the rounds, going to some really interesting places, talking about your new book. So yep. where can we see over the next few well, weeks? Well, it's a you know, book tour. Uh, so I'll be bouncing all over the place. You can go to homerhickam.com and, um, and, and also on my Facebook page, Homer Hickam, or the Homer Hickam official page, and I'll be putting up 
uh, where I'm going. The next stop is uh, I'm going a uh, week after next to Virginia Tech. Going to be down there for several days because I write about building the Skipper Cannon in mm -hmm. here. So they're pretty excited about that. <laughs> um, my version of how it was actually built. So I'm going to be down there uh, with the new book and also my classmates. They, they got excited about the whole thing because they were involved with building this cannon yeah. too. So a whole bunch of them are coming as well. So we'll be down there uh, Veterans Day actually, November the 11th. Mm -hmm. and spending the whole day at Virginia Tech with, uh, with the Cadet Corps and everybody else down there and talking about this new book and um, everything else. So I look forward to that. Yeah. Well, uh, we really appreciate you coming by. You're always welcome here at Mill Middle School and anywhere in the state. We just love having you. Um, you're an inspiration to so many people, um, including uh, personally to me and my family. So we just really appreciate all that you've done. And, um, and thank you for shining a light on West Virginia. We really appreciate it. Well, and, and you the, make everybody a lot more everything, proud. Everything that I've done, I owe to West Virginia. I was raised here by very special people and I was educated here by some great teachers like you, Brian. And as Teacher of the Year, there is a real possibility I'll see you next summer down at Space Camp. Won't that be fun? That would be amazing. You'll be walking around <laughs> wearing your little blue uniform. It'll be cool with all the other uh, Teachers of the Year. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy it down there. I think uh, uh, it'll be a special time of your life. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.